the Timberwolf Alliance, our mission is education. And the Timberwolf Alliance does not oppose or support a wolf hunting season. They support, we, support management decisions based on sound scientific data. So TWA has not commented yet on any <coughs> proposals for a hunting season. At this point, we are waiting for DNR to put forth a proposal, and then TWA will review it as if it meets the scientific data and before commenting. So I just want to set that record straight. Um, I want to go over a little bit of biology, not very much, because people often confuse the coyote with the wolf. And the difference is, is the wolf being much higher, stands about 30 inches at the shoulder. The leg from the tip of the tail to the um, tip of his nose could be as much as six feet. Uh, they weigh up to about 100 pounds. They have very large feet. They make their living on their feet, so their track is at least four and a half inches long by three and a half inches wide. Versus the coyote is very petite. Think of him as a funnel face. Um, sometimes, though, when a coyote is looking down, it's pretty hard to tell is that a wolf or a coyote. But they're about half the size of a wolf. Their track is only about two and a half inches long by one and a quarter inch wide. This is a well, a coyote pup in July. Um, and why this is significant, this was a rendezvous site when wolves and coyotes, after they leave the denning area, they have what's called a rendezvous site where the pups are learning how to hunt. And this was in our field right off our house. And we had a little coyote rendezvous site. But just for comparison, here's a wolf pup also taken in July. So your coyote pup and the wolf pup. You can see the difference in the size of their feet, just that alone. They've got huge feet, even as pups, they need to grow in. But what we're going to talk about today is the differences in our perceptions. And when we see a bear, people run for the camera. The first thing they do, oh wow, a bear. And this was from the Ironwood Daily Globe. She captured a video of a bear taking a leisurely afternoon stroll in the Ironwood Township not far from Lake Road. And her quote, it was amazing to see how fast a bear can run. I didn't expect the bear to move that fast. It was quite an awe-inspiring experience, she said. So that's your black bear, and this is what we see or think of when we see a wolf. Totally different. The wolf snarling, growling. The problem is, this is how they act toward other wolves, not toward humans, not toward their prey. Uh, it's a way of showing dominance over other wolves, usually over a food source or something else that they are trying to protect. And what this behavior does is it invokes a whine or submission from other animals. The other animals know to avoid this. They go, okay, you mean business. Here it is, field and stream. The new killers, wolves, cougars, coyotes, taking a bite out of your hunting. But it's a little hard to see. But up at the top it says, where I had the blue arrow, Wisconsin, trophy whitetails, Michigan, bucks of the UP. But the headline is the grabber. And this helps instill that fear. Right there. 1945 found this article where it, it's an ad that says Michigan's fed up with the wolf situation and today 500 hunters backed by officials are going to do something about it. They're going to take off from Ironwood, armed with shotguns, 22 pistols, and pursue the wolves relentlessly. The prey won't have much of a chance. Everyone expects wolves to die left and right on the frozen lake. This was 1945. But this was 2004. The only good wolf, uh, this one won't be eating any household pets, livestock, or maybe a child in the future. This was in the Antonagon Herald. So 1945, you go, oh, that was then. This is now. The attitude, 